you turn in your King James Bible to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. I want to talk real quick here, a little short, just a message to for instruction in righteousness to kind of stir you up a little bit, make you think about some things if you are free, uh, living in a free country like we have here in America. The, our freedoms are being attacked right now, very much so, um, especially the freedom that we have to defend ourselves, to defend those who we love with firearms. Um, it's very wicked that these people, they're bringing in you know, illegals, shipping them into the country by the thousands, just hordes of them coming in, um, heading into World War III, constantly pushing other countries to try to get them to fight us here in America, and they want to disarm you before the war starts so that you can be slaughtered. Uh, the devil's behind this whole thing, I can tell you that. But you know what? You have to get to a point where you say, give me liberty or give me death. And you say, is that a theme in the Bible? Absolutely, I'm going to prove it to you. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand fast, stubbornness. You won't move me. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I will not go back into a slavery position. I am not a peasant that can be controlled. And some corrupt politician can come along and say, you need to do this and you need to do, do that and we're going to teach, take your son from you and we're going to train him up in our ways and make him ashamed of how you are and how you've been raised and your ancestry and everything. No, that's not acceptable. I will take liberty. And where do I get my liberty from? The Word of God. Specifically, the King James Bible. I'm not interested in the ones that come from the Vatican, be it the NIV, the NASB, the, any of the other stuff, or the New King James Version. No, thank you. You keep your Vatican versions. The Vatican is the one that says you need to be subservient to Rome, to the Supreme Pontiff, the Holy Father. Well, the Holy Father can go to hell and burn. I'm not subservient to him. There's one mediator between man and God, and that's Jesus Christ. Not some man, some sinner down here on the earth. Give me liberty or give me death. Christ has made me free. I'm not going to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage from anybody down here on this world. And if you think about it, this is being written in the first century when Israel as a nation was under the bondage of Rome. But yet they were free. They went around and they did things. And I mean, you study what went on in the book of Acts. They were a lot freer than we are today. They traveled wherever they wanted to go. Paul gets in trouble and, they, and he says, you know, I need to go to Caesar and appeal to Caesar. Okay, gets to Caesar. Where are your accusers? There are no accusers here? Okay, you're free to go. <laughs> no little uh, bad, corrupt trials and whatever else. Paul says, hey, I'm a Roman. You can't beat me. I'm uncondemned. I'm a Roman citizen. And the guy says, oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we would have that today? Things are worse. And yet they, they said that they were free back then and we can be free today. Through Jesus Christ. I'll show you another one. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Every man has to come to a point where he says, This is my line in the sand, and you don't cross it. Corrupt government officials or whoever else. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 29. Conscience. Every man has a conscience given by God. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? You know what the whole anti-gun thing is about? My liberty, your liberty if you're a gun owner, our liberty being judged by another man's conscience. Well, I just don't feel it's right for people to have guns. I don't think anybody should have a assault rifle or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're not assault rifles. They're semi-automatic rifles that we can own here. I think people should be allowed to have fully automatic rifles, but, you know, that's very expensive and it's usually a waste of ammunition and there's really, really not much point because you're not aiming, you're just praying and spraying, as they say. But you see, other people's consciences should never judge our liberty. Well, we feel this and we feel that and we think that it's, you know, we have to stop the school shooting so we have to take guns away from everybody. That's stupid. Okay, if, if guns caused school shootings, there'd be, you know, hundreds of millions of of shootings every day because there's hundreds of millions of guns all across the country. It's dumb. This whole thing of these other people's consciences trying to judge our liberty. No, it doesn't work that way. 
I'm not going to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. I'm really sorry for those of you in other countries that have had your freedom taken away, uh, freedom to defend yourself. I'm sorry about that, but I'm an American, and I'm speaking to Americans, and I'm going to stand, stand up for firearms and the liberty to have guns. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I don't want to live in a country that no longer welcomes the spirit of the Lord. That says, oh, we can't give you liberty. We have to give up liberty for security. No, 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 no. Give me liberty or give me death. I am not interested in living in a cage. I'm not an animal. I'm a man with a God-given conscience, and my conscience is submissive to the word of God. Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Don't go out and kill somebody. Just for any reason. Oh, I don't like the way they look or something and kill. No. Thou shalt not kill, the Bible says as well, in relation to murder. I'm going to follow the scriptures according to my conscience that God gave me. But I'm also going to follow the scriptures and say, you know what? I have certain God-given rights. They're unalienable. You can't make laws against my God-given rights. And the Second Amendment is there to affirm my God-given rights. It's not Second Amendment and then God-given rights. No, no. God-given rights come first. Bodily integrity is my God-given right. Nobody has a right to tell me what to do with my body. Period. James chapter 1. I'll give you a bunch of scriptures here that you can use. Because ultimately it comes down, oh, you know, the First Amendment right. Well, what if they pass the 28th Amendment and Gavin Newsom, the Jesuit, is out there and he's doing his little music. You know, they have little background music and things and he's talking about, oh, we, I think that we need to do this and we need to do, you know. Uh, I don't care what laws you pass, all right? You're corrupt. You're crooked. And the Jesuit order, look at their oath that they have to swear to get into that whole thing there. But they're the ones that trained Gavin Newsom and all these other liberal you know, a lot of these other liberals and things too. They want to kill people. That's the whole point. Bring everybody back under subjection of Rome. So now you're no longer a man whose liberty comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. No, it's just the liberty that the Vatican says that you can have. I don't think so. James chapter 1 verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty... And continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You know why America was blessed? Because we had the perfect law of liberty. Liberty of conscience. You want to come here, you have freedom of religion. You have freedom of speech. You have liberty. You can carry a firearm on you. Hey, guess what happens if you do a crime with that firearm? You lose your liberty. Because you've committed a crime. But if you're out there and you haven't committed a crime, you retain your liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Give me liberty or give me death. See? You see how it works? You see how it's so important? But all these churches are becoming, they're making their people passive. Oh, we shouldn't fight about it. Okay, if they're going to come for the guns, just give them over. You know, just give them in. No. <laughs> no. There's no scripture for that. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. You say, well, then where's your anti-government? You're clearly anti-government. No, I'm not saying that either. Verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. The ordinance of men must line up with the Lord's sake. You see? Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Romans chapter 13 talks about that. I will submit myself to every ordinance of man that is in line with this book. Because good rules and good laws are in line with this book. The perfect law of liberty. You see? Um, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. Not good people, evildoers. You know what? You can stop all these school shootings, all these, these stu stupid liberal, this, this satanic regime that's in the government right now. They could stop all the school shootings like that. You know how? 
major punishment for the people that go out there and do them. You say, what about those that commit suicide? Don't report on it. Just don't report on it. Hey, and we, why do we even have public schools, by the way? I'd like to also point that out. That's not according to the scriptures, but that's a whole other issue. But have armed guards. You can stop these school shootings. It's a joke. They don't want to. Because, you see, that's how you do things. You create a crisis, and then you create opposition to the crisis, and then you offer the solution. The Hegelian dialectic. That's all that this thing is. They have no right to come for our firearms. Um, <clears throat> verse 14, And for the praise of them that do well. The government's supposed to praise us that do well. They're supposed to bless us and say, Hey, I'm glad you've owned firearms all these years and you've never committed one crime. Thank you. To the American gun-owning population, thank you for being law-abiding. Hey, there's some guy out there who tried to rob a bank or something, and some, you know, person, normal person, came out and said, you know, and shot the bad guy before he killed a bunch of people. Thank you. You did good. You have liberty. Verse 15, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. A lot of these arguments that they're coming out with. I mean, these liberal politicians cracks me up. They don't even know the right terminology for guns. They're coming out saying all kinds of nonsense. But look at verse 16. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Fearing God comes before honoring the king, by the way. Go to the next one, 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12 through 22. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Look at these politicians. They just stumble all over themselves when it comes to trying to explain guns. And I saw the head of the ATF the one time, and he was stumbling all over himself. Well, I'm not really sure. I'm not really an expert on guns. You're the head of the ATF, alcohol, tobacco, firearms. Yeah. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. All these people that are anti-gun, it's describing them perfectly. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with man's voice. The ass in the Old Testament, a female donkey, um, and she spoke with man's voice. Hmm. Forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Now look at this. Very important here. Verse 19. While they promise them liberty. Oh, we're not taking away your liberty. We're for liberty. We'll, we won't be, you know, we're going to keep your liberty and things as you're coming for our firearms. As you're trying to disarm us so that you can have us get slaughtered in the coming wars that are about to hit here in America. They promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. They are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. See, now they have a head full of knowledge of what to say to act like a Christian, but there's nothing down here in the heart. False convert, in other words. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Exactly. That's what happens to these brute beasts. Let's take away the guns. Let's take away the guns. Well, if it happens, guess what? Your life's going to be taken away. It would not be a good thing. It would be a very terrible thing to have all the guns taken away. 
But one more place to turn to here, Philippians chapter 1. And this is where it's going to come to, brethren. And if you're lost, you're not a saved man or woman, uh, it's going to come here for you. Well, it's going to come to the point of this. I'll say it this way. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I can say that because if I have to face death at the hands of tyrants, at bad guys coming and whatever else, for me to live is Christ. If I can survive that thing, then Christ is the one that made me free because he gave me liberty. But if I die, then as a Christian, as a born-again Christian, I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to heaven when I die because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to pay for my sins. I'll go to heaven when I die. So if I survive, if I live, I have liberty. Give me liberty. Or if I die, it's gain for me. I go to heaven. Give me liberty or give me death. And it's going to become a lot more apparent as time goes by. I just wanted to put this study out there uh, for American gun owners. Uh, it's very important that we retain our God-given rights. That comes first. And if you want power, then you better get the power here. Uh, while Republican congressmen and so-and-so, those guys are all bought and paid for. There's some that give lip service to the whole Second Amendment thing and whatever, but I don't trust any politicians, quite frankly. Um, they can be bought out, you know, and whatever else. They can fall and, I mean, how many times have we seen that through the years? Oh, so-and-so, he's a member of the NRA, and then he says, well, I would support some gun control or some uh, shall not be infringed, is what the Second Amendment says. Um, well, we can come out with the 28th Amendment. No, you can't. I mean, you can, but I don't care because my rights come from here. And you don't take this book from my hand. Obama, I think it was, called uh, people like me a bitter clinger. They cling to their Bibles and they cling to their guns. Yeah, amen, you wicked tyrant. He's a terror to good works. He's a terror to the good, not to the evil. You see, that's a ruler that you don't follow according to the scriptures. Romans chapter 13, it's telling you to follow good leaders. Submitting yourself to, to every ordinance of man uh, for the Lord's sake. You see, there in 1 Peter chapter 2. It's not talking about corrupt leaders, right? Um, there are some things that you should invest in as a Christian. And if you are, are an American Christian and you have the money, get a firearm. I'm telling you that. Well, I don't feel that that's the right thing. Okay, then forget it. Uh, you're very foolish. You're very ignorant of Scripture and very ignorant of history. Um, there is nothing wrong at all with a Christian defending themselves. You're not providing for your own if you don't know how to defend yourself. Um, we've had a number of uh, robbery attempts at our property out in the middle of nowhere. I can't imagine what it would be like in a more populated area. And um, I have guns, and I will defend. And uh, if I had to live someplace and I didn't have any guns, that would be horrifying. And don't tell me this, well, you have the Lord's and the Lord's enough. Uh, then why did Jesus tell his disciples to go out and buy a sword? If you don't have a sword, sell your garment and go buy one. Luke chapter 22. Why would God do that? Um, I have a study on self-defense in the Bible. You can see that. I give you all the scriptures for it. Um, but uh, the Lord is not for anybody that's rabidly anti-gun. They are servants of the devil. And if you study history, every single time gun control is enacted, it leads to a mass slaughter. Always, every single time. And God was there. He could have protected those people and he chose not to because they gave up their liberty. And if you give up liberty for security, you don't deserve either one. Very important. Uh, Bible-believing Christians need to be a strong fighting people. We don't go out and wage war to convert souls or something like that. No, we don't do that. But we have to have the ability to defend ourselves and to defend the innocent and the weak. Um, we can't let them take the guns in this country, period. We have to hinder the Antichrist system. And um, I mean, and just let me say this as a little bit of an encouragement here before I close this video. If you look at the actual science behind 
total gun confiscation in this nation, um, it's impossible. There's just no way. You look at how many miles of roads and how many houses and how many addresses and whatever else um, that whatever goon squad would have to go out and try to confiscate firearms, um, it's too big of an operation. And if it starts in one area, the rest of the country will find out. And then they'll be ready for whoever that goon squad is when they come to their town. Oh, you're saying that there won't be any gun confiscation, Brother Brian? No, I'm not saying that. There could be some spotted throughout that kind of scare you into submission. And they'll come out with all kinds of threats in the future. If you don't turn in your guns by such and such date, you're going to be in trouble and we'll come for them and we'll do this and do that. Um, don't fall for it because they can't get everybody. And again, don't give up the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't let them put you in a cage. Very important. That is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.